Describe your feelings on this book in five freaking seconds. Hot. Hot. <laughs> And that's all you need to know. Two different ways. And hot. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Kristen and Katie Read. I'm Kristen. I'm Katie. And we like to read. I feel like we have not prepped, which means I have no idea what the fudge we're gonna be saying, and I like that. Yeah, that's exciting. exciting. I couldn't even get it in there. <laughs> Today, we are going to be doing a book review for the sequel to The Bridge Kingdom. The Traitor, <laughs> the Traitor Queen by Danielle L. Jensen. Yes. So, just like last time, we are going to start with a quick spoiler free synopsis, rundown, comparisons, a review if you, we liked it or not. Um, and then we will let you know before we transition into our deep dive of the plot, our thoughts, what we liked, what we didn't like, and our overall rating. So let's dive on in, Katie. What happens in this book without spoilers? Okay. In this book, mm -hmm. we see Lara has come Lara. back to Arendal. No. Yeah. Arendal. Yeah. The secret. We're island. off to a good start. We just finished this. I know. We had to record this immediately because we both consumed it so fast because we really, spoiler alert, liked it. Loved it. <laughs> that we read it really fast, but I'm having a hard time remembering all the specifics. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. Okay. So, we last saw Laura going back to our sister, Anna, who discovered that Laura is actually a trained assassin, and they agree to partner with her to get Aaron back from Lara's dad. We learn that Lara um, is able to track down some of her sisters. And so she, after her meeting with Marilyn, she's very, very worried about how her sisters will respond. Um, and so that's kind of something exciting that happens whenever Lara finds her sisters and um, you don't know if they're gonna help or not. Aaron is captured and being imprisoned True. by Lara's father, the king of Marandrina. So Marandrina currently has control of the bridge. So they're controlling all of the trade as well as their country. They're still in their war with Valkala. Valkala. Pronunciation around there. Um, and the Ithaconians are still, <laughs> Ithaconians, whatever they're called, are still hiding on their main island. So that's where the plot really picks up. So will Arryn forgive her? have to read Trader Queen to find out, folks. It's so emotional. It's so emotional. So, and it's it's a duology. We didn't know that going yes. in, that this book is the last focusing on Laura and Aaron. And knowing that at the end made it so hard to say yeah. so goodbye to them. I actually Googled in the middle of reading this one because I felt like... I could, I felt like they were coming to a point of wrapping it up. I don't know why, because you meet a couple new characters that are not in the first book. I believe one of them is mentioned. You meet one of them is her brother and one of them yeah, is somebody from another kingdom. Karis is a part of the ruse to yes. take the bridge. Yeah. So you finally actually meet him in person. Um, and I was like, okay, this is an interesting introduction. So I actually Googled it. So I was able to really like come to terms with that for the last half of my reading journey. <laughs> so knowing that this is the ending of their story mm -hmm. is it reads a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, but never fear, the series will continue. It's already been greenlit for three, four as an another duology, and at least five, which we can only assume is going to be five, six it, as another duology. It wouldn't really make sense if it wasn't. Right. Unless the fifth one was not a total character shift and was just focused on all of them. That's the only way I wouldn't find that weird. I mean, really, there's just so much to say about this, but clearly you can tell we really like it. Katie, what would you rate this book? I would rate this book, I mean, probably like a little bit less than a five, but I'd round it up to a five. 
Okay. I really enjoyed it. I totally agree. I was like, okay, on Goodreads, you if it's either four or five stars, so I'm right. going to click that five stars. But if it was out of ten, I would probably say a nine. I really yeah, liked it. I agree. The adventure's really good. Again, I visualized it really well. I felt the emotions a lot, and she's such a strong, cool character. Aaron is like such a – I mean, he has a lot of things that I think – the male protagonists have in today's YA fantasies, but I still felt like he was really fresh. Yeah, like, I, I don't really, mean that in a bad way. No, I don't. I get what you're saying. I really, really liked Aaron in this book. Like seeing him come to terms with knowing that Laura was sent to kill him, loving her anyway, and then feeling betrayed yes, by her. Yeah, is just like such an emo emotional roller coaster for him in the first book and you're like still trying to like feel out if he's like this monster that Laura mm -hmm. was told he was and in this one you just get to see like what a complex character he is yes he's out of his element he's not with his people I also feel like he's challenged like he's not he's having to face all of his truths about the way he grew up and like is that the way he wants to continue and just big questions and I think they handle it really well that's one of my favorite um, it reminded me of Wonder Woman, like how in the first Wonder Woman, um, Diana's having to like learn everything about this new world yeah. she's been dropped in. Yes. And then in the second one, she like teaches Steve. That's so true. And that's how I felt like this yeah. one was too. Yeah. Because like Laura ha can't swim. Mm -hmm. She has never lived on an island. She grew up in the desert. Mm -hmm. And so the whole first book is like all of her first. And then in this one, he's in her country. Mm -hmm. We have to talk about the audiobook quality. The audiobook quality yes. is fantastic. So, you know, we're always looking to save a penny over here. You know, books are expensive. And we're both Audible members. This book, if you're an Audible member, was also free. Which I thought was interesting because a lot of times they'll offer, like, the first book in a series and then not the additional right. one. But this one was also offered for free on also Audible. Also free. And also incredible. incredible quality. Yes. So the first one, like we discussed in our last video, had like these ocean storms, storm, these storm sounds. And this one is like the beats of drums. Mm -hmm. like, like war drums. War drums. Yeah. Really, really exciting. Made you want to just keep listening to the next chapter. The Kindle book was only $6 too. Really? Yeah. I also really like you like are in Aaron's point of view and then mm -hmm. he's like, thinking about what Laura said and like it's her voice I guess I just didn't notice it, it and I so thought it seamless. was really cool also I looked up the man who narrates <laughs> <Aaron. laughs> he's like a very he's yeah. like the most famous British narrator well he's got a hot voice and I, he's kind of hot he's like an attractive dude I feel like I, I mean I've heard both of them narrate other books yes which I thought was also interesting because she's I don't know how well known Daniel L. Jensen is. Agreed. Okay. I, I don't this know. This is my first book. Yes, this book was just blowing up on social media and people were really loving it. But I haven't seen a ton about her others, but I'd be really interested to dive into them because I really enjoyed this. So, yeah. <laughs> that is your spoiler free. Let's dive in. We have to talk about these details. Oh my gosh. Wow. I don't know where to begin. I just. There's so many scenes. You jump right in. I love I, from the moment she meets her sisters. I wish. Yes. But critique. I wish we spent more time with them. Agreed. I want to well, follow their story. Okay. Can we go ahead and talk about what the next ones are going to be about? Yes. Because yeah. this is something that I think I've struggled with. Because we meet her sisters in this one. There are 10 of them. Right. And we really only get to spend time with three of them yeah that is an interesting choice on her part I just they're such interesting characters yes and so much of this book to me as when you were with other characters because it does feel different from the first one not different enough where you're like oh this isn't the same world but where I'm like what are her intentions like why are we doing this yeah are, and then of course as we know like Katie mentioned shifting focus to two other characters in the next two and then in the fifth one what we know I was like oh that's why we're doing this so to not have an announcement about the sisters, maybe it's a far off dream. Like maybe there'll be something, about it. or maybe they're important. Maybe they're important to book three and four, who focus on Laura's full brother, not full half brother, brother, which for some reason feels important. Yeah, well, I, I mean, mean, both of their parents are dead, so I like don't understand and why. Because I think it will a give his character motivation. Yeah, because 
Laura is his full, like, sister, and their mother died trying to get her back, mm -hmm. so I'm sure he had, like, some kind of complex. Yeah. With that. And then the girl for the next... <laughs> well, the book has betrayed her to us. <laughs> I want to talk... Okay, let's talk about the Ooh, characters, wait. but I just thought about about 100 other things I want to talk about. Well, <laughs> okay. First... <laughs> Back to the next book. Yeah. So we're not getting the sisters. Instead, we're getting her brother. What's his name? Karis. Karis. And the... Valkala. Eris. Eris. To, yes. Valkata. Valkata Eris. It's her niece, right? Yes. And they're both important in this book. Yes. And we are told that book two and book three, which is like their first book in their duology, happen at the same time. Is it at the exact same time or is it kind of like book two starts, we got some overlap and then book three? All I could find was that their they timelines overlap. overlap. Okay. That would make sense. So then what I'm thinking is that book five is supposed to be about Anna and the Prince of Arendelle. Mm -hmm. And so I'm assuming that those stories overlap. Yeah. It'll be interesting because I really, really like Anna and I like seeing her. We've just established her with the people that I've seen her with. So seeing right. her in a different element, I it'll, don't know. It'll be interesting seeing her as the outsider whenever she's she had so, to welcome Laura in. Yes, and she's so confident and like sassy and like puts this outward strength that I bet when you get her point of view, she's actually very insecure. And I, I'm excited to kind of peel back those layers for someone who is so physically strong and outwardly, she's like emotionally the, strong. You know what I mean? She's the commander of yeah. one of the biggest islands in She's Ithacana. strong in every sense of the word. So it'll be really interesting getting to know her and her emotions, her insecurities, and all of that jazz. Yeah, because she definitely wasn't in this book as much as I thought she was going to be. Yeah. So it made sense to me whenever I read that later books were planning, were planned from mm -hmm. her point of view. Absolutely. So we're going to be following closely to see if there are any updates if there's something that needs to be discussed, we'll obviously be addressing it. But that's all we know about upcoming stuff. I think something I really loved about this one is seeing, like you said, Laura and her element and her environment, but just seeing the two of them alone for so long of the book, just yes. surviving and her having to be the strong one for him. He's, I mean, occasionally the strong one for her in the first one, but really, I mean, her dragging him through the sandstorm and going based off of memory through those buildings i saw it in my mind so clearly i loved it loved that we revisited the compound yes i loved that all of the bones and him realizing like she had to make that choice knowing i know these people are going to die and i have to let it happen because if i try to stop it i'm just going to like become a part of the problem. Yeah, yeah. It, it's still something else is still gonna happen. I'm only gonna delay this by however x many days, which is that or is that not the right choice? Like I, it's a really intriguing question. She reminded me a lot of um, Selena from Oh, Throne she Glass. has total Selena vibes. Yeah, like the like, not Aelin vibes, Selena vibes. Oh yeah, <laughs> so Aelin's got it together. She's trying I, to figure it out. <laughs> why I like her better. So like. True. I love Laura. She's amazing. And but she definitely has that like I'm really cocky and yep. I know what I'm doing and I'm flying by the seat of my pants and it's going to work out for me. <laughs> yeah. Kind of vibe that I just love in a heroine because that's how I want to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I want to be like really confident. I want to be able to like totally, you know, take a man down. <laughs> Like, Fun side story, while working out this morning, <laughs> my husband and I were doing like medicine ball throws and he was like, you got to throw it as hard as you can. Like you're pushing an attacker away from your body. And I was like, you know what? That's actually pretty good motivation. And it made me think of all of the books where the females are super badass. And I was like, just channel them, just channel them. Uh, it is funny when you read these and you're like, I want to be like that. But right. the work it takes to be like that is I mean, another yeah. story. And, like, psychologically, she's, like, pretty tormented. Right. She's had a hard life. Like, I'm not trying to actually be like Laura. That's but. actually something I wanted to talk about that I was thinking. Um, I really like, I think it's the perfect balance of understanding her past so that we understand her trauma without not, dwelling on it. You're so right. Because sometimes it can be 
so many pages that you almost get bored with it. Not that those experiences are boring by any mm -hmm. means, but when it isn't something you have personally gone through, you're like, okay, I've, I've established it. Right. And like not many people can relate to, to, to these types of dramas. The like, kind of like being yeah. taken at five and being trained to be an assassin. Right. And your father, knowing that your father is planning to murder 11 of your, 11 of his daughters at one dinner. Like who can relate? Maybe Arya Stark another fictional character like I just don't know who else has these traumas yeah. but I also like that that we understand those traumas enough to then understand her thought process yes and buy it and believe it yes because sometimes in some other fantasy books the way that characters can just either like brush something off like after something like pretty horrible has happened or like make these really rash decisions and we don't really understand their history mm -hmm. enough to like empathize with them. You're right. I do feel like it's balanced. Like an example of this to me is of course it's tragic in the mortal instruments when Max dies, but we don't really know Max and it's not really established. Like watching Izzy struggle with the death of her little brother for so long, while I understand in real life that would be really hard, I don't felt like it was earned in the book. Mm -hmm. And so like she made up for it. She obviously later. makes up for it later. <laughs> My goodness. But I thought this was really well balanced. Agreed. But other than thinking back on this book, there's really only a few like major plot points. It's like Arn captured, kind of seeing him have to be suffer, watching his people try to save him and they're dying. That's so hard for him to watch. You meet her brother and the um, heiress from the southern continent. And then it's just them trying to escape through the desert, try to forge this plan with the southern continent get back to Ithacana and then the final battle. I mean, that's yeah. really the whole thing. I like to, it's another enemies to lovers because they're mad at each other yet again. Yeah. Even though they already love that's each true. other, but they have to like re-fall in love and be like, okay with loving each other. Yeah. I love it. I love it too. Perfectly balanced. I hate a sequel where they tear the people apart just to get back together. Mm -hmm. But th this, again, it was earned. Agreed. <laughs> again, we talked a lot about where's the line? Where's yeah. the line of like something so terrible happened that you can't be forgiven? And in the first book, you think that his cousin Taryn died. Again, this is the spoiler part. She lives. She lives. She's alive. And I think that was an important part for it being forgivable. Certain characters right. that you know have to be okay that her actions didn't kill some certain people. Right. Even though they kill off screen people. Yeah. A bunch of red shirts died. Yeah. But I did, I did think that the part where she has to like sit and hear like all the soldiers in Ithacana like come up and tell her like who they lost in their family or like it's they haven't hard. seen their family in a year mm -hmm. and like all of that kind of stuff. I thought that that was a really good step in her atonement. Yes. Where like I really felt really bad for her. Yes. And I think, although I found this part very cheesy, I felt like it was the perfect way to make me believe that everyone would forgive her, is that she cared so much for Ithacana and poured herself into it that the sharks could sense that. That was something that the actual monsters in the water could sense and don't attack her and kill her when she falls into the water at the end. Let me tell you how much I love that part. It's so corny, and I'm like... That's some real Sarah, Sarah J. Moss shit right there. Like, that was just so <laughs> something that would happen. Like, of course. Here's the thing. We talked about, like, how this is really not a fantasy. Right. But I love that part of, like, she. so, like, the sharks don't attack her. And then he, like, Aaron, like, tells her what they do to traitors. And they dangle them in the water. They put chum in the water. And then they, like, see if the shark attacks them. And not one of them. Never. Has anyone survived? Gotten away. Mm -mm. And so I love that idea of like, people may not even want to forgive you, but you were tried and you passed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's, and she's the only one. I, of course, in novels, it's always, you make the rules so that someone can break it at the right time. And you have to be really protective of when those rules are broken. And again, I, I fully bought this. We got that story and then we got the payout and it, it didn't felt, it didn't feel forced. It felt really cool like okay that's really deep in their culture and she now gets the happy ending with Aaron but let's talk about when he legitimately thinks she's dead he thought it so hard I thought she was dead whenever she drowns yes and he's like I sh her dead body's in my arms I was like oh shoot 
wait, we're not giving a happy ending? For- I I bought it in a way that I never buy it. Really? Like, I mean, and how many books do you really, you're always like, okay, well, they're going to come back. Right. He said it or thought it, I don't remember, it. so many times I was like, oh my God, she's, de- she's dead, folks. She's dead. She passed the shark test to die. <laughs> I mean, that would be upsetting. I, I, I really thought, I was like, well, this took a much darker turn. But the the book has dark tones sometimes where, you know, they shock you. And I was like, maybe she's doing it. Thank God she did it. But I know. It was a close call. I wonder if she debated it. I, yeah, probably. But they're going to be in later books. Right. She needs them in later books. So. So I love that. How do you feel about the resolution of the novel? <laughs> I texted you right after. Mm-hmm. In all caps, there was only a two-page resolution. Now, upon further looking, I understand there's more, but let me just, uh... It's quick. It's so fast. Okay. I know when you're listening to it, I wasn't, I didn't even realize that it was wrapping up. Okay. And then it was like, goodbye, there, you, there will be more, or whatever. Okay, so the final chapter, the resolution that we get, starts on page 327. And the book ends on 331. That's a fast wrap up. That's like the Oscar music didn't play you out. They they just they just (laughs) went on to the next programming. (laughs) Like, I mean, I Kristen, I was shocked. I I I just really needed more. Well, we're gonna get more of them. There will be another. (laughs) I know that we're gonna get more of them, but it's a drought that we're facing. It's just really hard because they said a lot of things before they parted ways. And then they said a lot of things in, like, the cavern while Mm -hmm. she was drowning. And, like, she immediately thinks, like, he only said that because I was dying. Mm -hmm. And then really quick, he has to be like, no, I love you. I want you to stay. And then she's like, great. And then she, like, hops out of bed and they go to a meeting together. Yeah. I, but I believe it. I believe that she, she doesn't act okay unless she isn't. She's like, yeah, he fully wants, he fully wants me here. And so I'm not going to be insecure about it. We're good to go. But I can't, I mean, like, I can't complain. Literally, I was, like, bawling during the cavern scene. <laughs> I was, like, holding her through the port, portcullis? The portcullis? New word alert, folks. Had to look it up. It's like a grid looking thing. So yeah, that it's like the, like, the yeah. bars. Yeah. I felt the part that sticks out the most to me is the cavern scene for mm-hmm. sure but next to that as a personal struggle for Laura Laura is the scene where she's chained naked outside and honestly I kept being like wait did I read that right because it just like doesn't phase her the only thing that phases her about being naked and these people just violating her in a way chaining her up and just in a way that's unnecessary is she just is focused on her sunburn she's like darn Parts of me that, and she's only thinking of practicality. She's like, it's going to be harder for me to move when parts of my body that don't see sun are sunburned. Right. Which is so true. Just my shows you how God. tough she is. Yeah. Are you kidding me? If you got sunburned, like, oh my God. Like, that bad? Yeah. I like, mean, she's not wrong. It's a legitimate no, concern. Yeah, but. 100%. I know. And it was really hard. You don't get Aryan's perspective for, like, a couple of chapters. And the fact that she even for a second was like, oh, my gosh, she's just going to blow through town and ditch me here. How hard it was. I do, like, later when he's thinking how hard it was for him not to just snap immediately and to play the long game. But that shows both of them understand acting in the immediate, based off of your emotions, is not what's going to keep you alive which is waits really great because so often i mean again kind of like the benefit of a duology is that like your characters have to learn their lessons faster yeah and i think they don't fall into the trilogy slum which is that middle book being just where everything breaks so that the third one can come back together there has to be resolution in this one describe your feelings on this book in five freaking seconds Three, two, one, go. Hot. Hot. (laughs) Okay, put me on the spot. Hot. Okay, 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 okay. okay, okay. okay. Can I try again? Yeah, okay, ready? One, two, three, go. Hot, steamy, romantic, forgiving. Yes, I like that. And satisfying. I like that. 
Was that just five words? You just said five words, but I also liked it. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Are you ready? I mean, I took five good ones. Okay. So three, two, one, go. Dusty, <laughs> naked, <laughs> murder, sharks. <laughs> Not enough sex. <laughs> murder, sharks. And great. <laughs> I gotta work on this. Maybe we should prep these better. You heard but it first. Those when I was like, quick. That those are the first things that came to my brain. So murder sharks. <laughs> I agree though. Um, not enough sex. Not enough sex. So I hope that some of the later books we still get some of their point of view because if they're in scenes from other characters' points of view, I could be wrong, but I don't think they'll be having sex if someone else you is mean there. Their siblings' <laughs> books. Um. So other books that kind of reminded me of this book. Mm -hmm. I haven't read it, but I think the the shadows between us. Or I don't know if that is. It kind of reminded me of um, the Scorch Trials, simply because of just the the heat and the sand and just trying to survive. It also not book wise, but kind of reminded me of just Ray trying to survive with BBA and just oh, yeah. like chilling. And it also made me think of Hunger Games. Not they're not under trials, but they are being tried to be killed and just trying to survive these like weird elements. I don't know why that's not a good explanation, but no, I get it. They're just constantly on the run. And I like in the hunger games, like the setting changes a lot. Yeah. So like in the first book, it's like the stadium. Maybe that's what it was because the first one is a jungle and mm -hmm. then this one's a desert. And so I was like, you know, the hunger games has such distinctive, yeah. settings that I think that is why it was in the back of my mind yeah. and then it also made me think of just Game of Thrones from the battle like the boats like oh, when you yeah. see um what's his name the uncle like crash in and you see that battle in the dark oh yeah yeah I really thought of that too yeah that and Pirates of the Caribbean because what other boat shows am I watching <laughs> boats 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 and then another I mean just another enemies to lovers that we've read this year or like last year serpent and dove yeah the fact that they get married so quickly that the wife is hiding her true identity yes My hiding goodness. is a big secret that the her husband would kill her for yes and the in the wife is the one who probably has the more unforgivable or darker past yes but Which also interesting maybe the moral high ground yes which i, I heard it here love. first Women have the moral high ground. <laughs> so I loved it. That's the Trader Queen. Yeah, I really liked it. I, thought, I liked it a lot. I thought that it had a really good theme, that it stuck to like the idea of wanting forgiveness but not expecting anything in return. Yeah. I thought that was a really great through line. I just feel like Lara is such an interesting character in like she's is very complex and again we get like so much of her past trauma mm -hmm. that i think it a helps her be more believably forgivable and i really like that in this book we see her see be so much more vulnerable yeah she's immediately more willing to give information and even whenever she was like happy in ithacana she still was hiding secrets and so in yeah. this book all of her secrets out on the table. She wants nothing in return for what she's doing. She had one singular purpose in the first book and it blew up in her face and that was all she ever knew or wanted. And then to have to come to terms with that and then become a person that she can live with and be happy with, she has to be vulnerable. And I love that. I love that line. Whenever he's like, why are you trying to get yourself killed? And she's like, I'm not. I'm just trying to like make myself able to live with what I've done. Yeah. I love the Trader Queen. Read it. <laughs> Recommended by Kristen and Katie. Um, if you guys enjoyed this book review, like, comment, whatever you're thinking, subscribe. Check us out on Instagram, Kristen and Katie Read. That's it. Bye, guys.